Welcome back everybody, Kathy Arbor here and today is Paint Along Thursday and we're going to be using some acrylic paint today. I'm going to be using mostly craft paint, Americana, folk art. You can use whatever you have. Um, I strongly believe in using what you have. <clears throat> so if you have artist grade, use that. If you have gouache, you could use gouache. It doesn't necessarily have to be um, done in acrylic either. Uh, I do have a traceable for this one, um, and it's for everybody, including um, the public. So you don't have to join for this one. But um, joining my membership is greatly appreciated. It helps me uh, continue doing these videos and um, supporting my channel. And if you uh, aren't inter interested in the membership, then even just a super chat or something just to help with the um, channel would be very ap much appreciated. So I'm doing a bear. Uh, I just thought it would be cute. Hi, Jilly. Good to see you. And uh, I have some flowers around it. Now, it can be sunflowers, it could be daisies, whatever you want to make it. So what I've done, um, this is the actual printout that you can get, and the link is down below in the description if you want to play along. And what I'm going to do is I've drawn this onto an existing piece of scrapbook paper. So I've just cut the shape of where I'm going to um, adhere it to my, where did I put it, the, um, <laughs> I just had it. It's a file folder. I don't know where I put it. I just had it in my hand. Unbelievable. Okay, so it was a file folder, and we did the Scarecrow last week. Um, you can find that in my videos from last week, if you want. And I like using my scrapbook paper. It's a little bit thicker than a regular paper. Hi, Dorothy. Good to see you. And I don't put anything on here. You can put a clear gesso if you um, want a little bit more um, ability as far as moving the paint without it staining the paper right off the bat. Uh, I like the background. And this way I don't have to do a background. But if you want to do it on a canvas or a file folder, sketchbook, art journal, whatever you got, go right ahead and do that. Now today, I am going to be using my wet palette. And I do like these, I must say. Uh, it keeps your paint wet and it doesn't dry out on you. Um, so there is a savings in that. And if you're wanting to um, just do it uh, throughout the day, like say you don't want to rush through it, you just want to do a little bit, go have a coffee and not worry about um, having your mixes dry up, this is really great. And this one uh, in particular I found on, it's a Masterson, oh, you can't see it, it actually says Masterson here. And it comes with the little bottles. You can put the paint in if you want. I don't necessarily use that. You could. I don't put enough out for uh, to be used in, say, another painting. Because um, I never know what I'm going to be doing. So, But you could. Uh, if you're doing a huge painting, and you know it's going to take you a while, you could use those. Um, little containers for sure. So I thought what I will do since I have my background already on here which is the, the scrapbook paper 
I'm going to start off with the bear because the flowers are going to be over top of the bear. So we want to always work your way from the back to the front. Now the bear is fairly simple to do. Um, it's basically a lot of little strokes. So if you have a bristle brush or a grainer or a rake, this is a rake I believe, no this is a ridge brush. So as you can see it's got a funny um, end here, three little bits. This will give it a little bit more of a bigger line. And then you can get them in many sizes. Here's a fan brush that's got a little bit of, um, this will give you a little finer edge. And greener. Where's my greener? They're called different things too. Um, rakes, grainers, um, ridge. Hmm, I know I have another one in here somewhere. There's another one, a little finer, but this one, uh, does it say what it is? No. Just, this is Royal Lampkin. A fairly inexpensive um, make. But if you don't have any of those, you can also use a bristle brush. Um, get one that's not going to stay a chiseled edge. I would use probably um, a flat and then just um, mess it up a little bit so that it's splayed. So I'll bring that out too just to show you. Um, if you have a bristle brush in a fan, that will work also. Let's see if I can find those. You want something that's going to give you a nice line work. If you want, you can also just use a script liner, but it's a whole lot of strokes that you're going to have to do. Um, So to start off with a bear, we want to start off with our, it's a, this one is going to be a black bear. That's what we have in this area of Canada. Um, we don't have grizzlies or, I don't think we have brown bears either. We just have the black bear. Um, so we want a fairly dark, not black though, uh, but you could use, say, um, Ash Fulton with a bit of black in it, or Payne's Gray with um, some dark umber would also work. Uh, let's see, Van Dyke Brown is another nice dark brown. Just add a little bit of either navy blue would work. There's many, many ways of making a dark color. Hi, Brenda. Hey, Janet. So we're going to start off with fairly dark. So it's kind of a brownish black. So this one is Ash Fulton, and I'm going to just put a smidge of black to it. And these are just the craft paints. You can use Artist Grade. Um, just, so just find a color close to what I'm using. Uh, this is uh, Lamp Ebony Black, so I'll just put a little bit of this out. And I should have, I think I need a little bit of a buff color. one out I guess. 
So even light buttermilk would work or buff, whatever you have. So I may as well use these up. I'm trying to use up my craft paints because they are very old. And they're still doing good. Some are a little chunky, but most of them are still working. Um, and it's basically what I do, how I start off my paintings, is I'll put a base layer in. So, for a base layer, you can take I'm just going to take um, some of this Van Dyke Brown, I think. No, Ash Voltum. Or a Van Dyke Brown Umber would work too. A little bit of black with it. I want it darker. I don't want it brown. I want it a very more on the black side. But I don't like black black either. Now, I do have some golden glazing medium. And we'll be using some of that. Also, I'm almost at the bottom, so I'm just going to put some, oh, I'm almost out. I'm going to just put it upside down because I'm almost out. And this is great for if you want to extend the drying time in your paints. And you can use it for craft paint. All right. So I'm going to do the darkest areas, which would be around the eyes. And um, you'll have the traceable to go by if you lose some of the markings. So it's always good to make sure you have um, two copies, just in case you use your one copy for something else. Now the nose is a little bit on the pale side. It's kind of a buffy grayish color on these black bears. Now the darkest areas are, like I said, around the eyes. So I'm just going to put those in. Now if you want, you can also uh, just watch what I'm doing. And then go back and follow along with me if you're going to play along and paint. Sometimes it's best just to watch instead of uh, trying to keep up. Okay, and under her, the neck, just by the uh, side of his head here too will be darker. And his ear. And a little bit above his Going under his chin, be darker right in here. And under and I liked always to uh, paint in the direction the fur would be going, even at this very early part of painting because you never know if some of those marks are going to show through. Let's make up some more of that. So this way if you have an area that's um, showing and you've painted in the direction that the fur would be going in, you don't have to worry about it. Uh, let's see, so in here. Uh, 
I can go a little bit on the out edge, just make some scruffy marks. If it's patchy looking, that's fine for right now. Um, top of his ear is a little darker, and I'm just um, making it kind of wispy. And the inside of his ear is a little bit. Here and here be a little bit dark just before it gets to the top of the year. Okay, now I'm going to make a little bit lighter color. It's a little more brown than black, um, and probably a little bit of white in there, or not white, that buff color, and. This can go on the top of his head a little bit. And then we'll paint over top of it with some darker colors also, and some light colors. But it's a little bit lighter on the top of his head. Just from the way the, sh the um, sun's shining. And over his eye. Paper towel. And his little muzzle can be done in that color also. Just underneath his eye. It's a little bit and this is going to be a lot of back and forth of covering um, his fur. Maybe a little bit under his chin. On top of his nose. Right in here. Not too worried because we're going to do a lot more brush marks. So don't worry if it looks kind of ugly. <laughs> it always looks that way in this stage of the painting. Don't worry about it. We just want a, a bit of color for the undertones. nose there. Okay. And I think I'm going to do this a little bit of the brown and then I'll just go over bits of it with the lighter color. I'm not too worried about it. And this here, put in his ear, just above his eye is a little bit lighter. Okay, so we got our basic colors there. His nose is fairly dark. Uh, it could be almost black. So I'm going to put his nose. 
there's highlights on his nose too, but we're just going to basically paint in his nose for now. And then we can um, look at our reference uh, drawing to put in the nostrils again once we have some a uh, little bit of uh, highlights. He has a little bit, um, goes down here. There's a little lip. And his eyes are really dark, so I'm just going to do those mostly black for now, just so that it doesn't get lost. And then we can add the details later, just so that we can't, so we don't uh, lose them. of the year here. So this year's looking a little bit more roundish. Out here, a little fuzzy. Okay, so I'm going to put that brush down for now and let's dry this so we can add another layer. Uh, this is just scrapbook paper, so I'm going to have to dry in between layers. Now, we can use either um, a grainer or one of these bristle brushes. I'll show you the bristle brush first. Let me see if I got a scruffier one. Uh, I could try a grainer. We'll see. Uh, this grainer... Uh, it's it's a blender actually by Princeton. It's Velvet Touch, and they're fairly stiff. If you can hear that. And a lot of people use these uh, for blending, making marks like fur and stuff. So let's try this first. See what we get out of it. So I'm gonna add a little bit more black. Just to the end of my brush and I know that um, actually I'm thinking here oh we want to start I think I'll do the under his chin first so yeah that works because it's stiff it gives it a, a very rough look You see that? And 
And this is when you have to remember the direction of the fur. Don't fill it in completely because you want to be able to see uh, some of those areas. So he's got a little bit of dark area there under his chin. And some in here. And depending on how uh, much pressure you put on your brush and how much paint will give you a different look. So you got to kind of play with it to see um, how that brush works. So his eyebrows. He does have a little bit of fur coming down into his muzzle. And this his eye. And just on the edge of his ear. Put some in there. tips of his ears. This actually works pretty good. You can get different sizes, real small, you can get a lot larger. This is a 3 8 So depending on the sizes you're working in, here, put some, and then just sweep some in a little bit. I still want it fairly light there. here along the top of his ear. It's a little bit darker. Put some more in there. <clears throat> and the edge of his body. Can throw some in there. Down here. Don't have to put a lot in, but just a, a bit. He's kind of got rolls in his fur as, Just look at your reference. There's it shows how his fur is going. So just take a look at those. I'm gonna put cover that there. on the inside of his ear. Just on the edge. 
edge here. A little darker. And the inside of his by his eye and his muzzle was a little bit. And just try and keep in mind that fur direction. Do you guys want to be brought in closer so you can see this a little bit better? Let me know. Hi Kathleen. here by his muzzle. I'm going to put that in there. And just a little bit coming down here. If you do a little booby boo boo like that, don't worry about it. Because we're going to do multiple layers, so don't get too worked up if there's a spot you don't like. Alright. Now he's kind of got a. Mm, a little bit of a tan color also in his fur. So if you have some uh, raw sienna, let's see. Okay, I've got some cinnamon, but raw sienna would work too. And I'm going to just put a little smidge here. Don't need a lot. If it's uh, too dark, you can always lighten it with a little bit of the buff or cream. So it's just a very, very, I'm going to lighten some of this with the buff. And I'm going to add a little bit of brown to it, I think. Just to, yeah, that's better. I don't want it to um, red. It's almost got yellow in it. I'm going to take this yellow just a smidge. There, that's better. So, just on the very tops of his uh, little, I don't even know if this is going to show. Remember, we can always go back. Just go along the edge of the black that you did in, in around his eye here. There's just a little bit, so just lightly. 
You can always go back if you put too much. And in his ear. Just sweep some of that up. bit along the edge of his ear. And a smidgen in here. Just be kind of just play with it. So I'm keeping in mind my direction of the fur. Got a little bit. I'm gonna need a bit smaller brush here. Just a little bit of that color under his little nose. I'm just gonna more or less glaze a little bit of that color in here where his lip is. around the edge of his nose here a little bit. Then in the um, just a smidge underneath along the edges. It's just kind of more or less a highlight. Just going into the black area just to give it a little more contrast. We can always go back, so don't worry if it you don't like what um, how it's looking. You can always go back on with some um, darker or lighter color. get into a little bit of grayish. So some more actually I could probably just Some of this with a little bit of black. I'm 
I want it fairly light. Take some of it out. Okay, let's try it. Now, The snout has smaller hairs, so you gotta remember that too. Okay, that's too blobby. Back to the hazy color. Back and forth. Bit of brown just in here, just ever so lightly. A bit on here. here some of that brown a 
You just play with it. Thanks, Dot. It's fun. I like trying things out. A little more black on my brush. Let's go on the more black up just on the very top here need some so, so it looks more condensed top And here. Now I would a little bit more black. So you can look look up a black bear see what it uh, the fur looks like as far as color um, combinations Alright. So let's do the eyes. I love doing the eyes. Uh, I'm going to need a smaller brush, probably a flat or a round, small. Okay, so I want a little bit of that kind of brownish color, beigey brown color, and let me just put the eyes have a lid. It's not a very good brush. I need something that can take a nice point. 
me find something here, guys. I'm picky. Picky. You could use your colored pencils if you want to. It's up to you. I like to, oop, too much water. Just a little bit here. Putting a little bit of a glaze on the bottom part of the eye there to lighten it a little bit. And soften the edge. Want it too thick. And then clean up the edge with some black. should just use my colored pencils with this part. I know I'm probably nitpicking here, <laughs> but I like doing that. I don't know why, I just do. Actually, that eye is a little off. A little bit of a highlight. I'm just going to use this color. Just a smidge.
Thanks, Jilly. Let's do this little nose of his. So kind of a gray we want again. So and I want it a little bit on the watery side, more of a glaze. And he's got it's still two. I like to smudge. A flat, I think. Mm. Get a little bit of that good enough? Nope. Chisel flat edge. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of that gray color on one end. Get some more water on my brush. That needs to come out black more. Right in here. Like a goofed. Covered up. And nose sticks out more. Nostrils have to be the right shape, too. I think this here, or it looks funny. <laughs> this needs to go down like that to here. And this one needs to be a little.
Sorry, concentrating. Get his little nose right. Lighter right there, and hmm. Doesn't take much to, you know, a little dab here, a little dab there. <laughs> whiskers on them too. Because kind of mm, some lighter whiskers, a few on his chin. A few on his nose. I guess I could put those with marker so I don't go crazy. There's a little guy. <laughs> Alright, so we got him on for, he's good enough for now. Uh, now I want to put some sunflowers or ah, whatever flower you want to put on. I, I think I'm going to put smaller flowers, sunflowers on and so they're going to be yellowish colors. Maybe some of them have a little bit of brown in them. And these are going to not be as, um, what would you say, um, precise. Like they're not going to be um, realistic per se. 
they're going to be more more on the um, uh, impressionistic, I guess. So, depending on the sunflower, some of them have longer petals, some of them have smaller petals, so you can decide what you want to do. Um, I'm going to make a circle with a pencil here, and I think I'm going to put a bigger one on the bottom. So see, I have different, but I'm going to keep to this L shape. So we'll uh, probably add a larger one here, and then one there. And then as you go back, they'll get smaller. So uh, maybe a side one there. Okay, so let's start off with that. And we'll add a little brown to that. Yellow. And just going to basically put in the circles. So I know where they are. So I'm not too worried about any detail right now. I'm just base coating. Maybe I'll have a little bit of yellow on there. Um, maybe around the edge, have a little bit of yellow. Okay, this is a fairly soft brush, so I'm going to switch to um, a bigger brush so I can make some. If you have a filbert in a large size or a large round, you can use that. Let's see what I got here. I think I have a filbert in a soft. Oh, I see. Oh, that's pretty big though. Hmm. I don't do a lot of big paintings. <laughs> There's one. All right. So, so this is a filbert, and I'm just going to take some of that yellow. You can mix in a little bit of the. Um, brown if you want. You can mix in a little red or sienna. So if this one's mm, facing up, so we're going to have um, small petals, so maybe we won't see the petals on that side, but and usually they're not that, they're not really that um, long. They're fairly short petals. So I just put a, and then maybe these ones will be a little bit bigger. You want a fair amount of paint on your brush when you're doing these, because it's just basically a one stroke. So this one's going to basically face you.
I'm just going to do a bunch with this one color, and then I'm going to switch and do another color on top. Now this one um, is either facing this way or it's facing that way. I think I'm going to have it facing like this. And this one I is facing this way, so I'm gonna you know maybe they're just depends how much you want to do. You can have them overlapping if you want. Now I'm going to dry that and I'm going to change it by putting a little bit of either sienna in it or red, something like that, orange. One thing I should have put in was some leaves first. So let's do that before I get too far ahead of myself. Um, plantation pine or any darker green and you can mix the yellow with it to lighten it. And these are just going to be quick leaves also. Put a little bit of yellow with that. And let's see, let's put some, it have some, I can always paint over this, so don't worry if you're um, losing some petals, you can always paint over it. be some of these little funny backing on the plant. Sometimes you'll see that. So let's put a stem there and then we'll have one here and one there. Um, we'll have some there and let's mix colors. They're kind of heart shaped. So um, don't have them all going up. Kind of swoop them downwards. They can be in different directions. This is just the base coat. So don't worry about the shape too much. Because we can change that. Throwing in some
background. I think I'm going to Okay, let's try that. terrible. Okay, how did I lose a freaking brush? Oh my gosh. That's not it. It's not in the water. People, where did I put it? <laughs> oh my gosh. How can you lose a brush? Oh, there it is. I'm blind. <laughs> All right, I think I'm gonna put a leaf in here too. Looks like it needs it. So we could have I can paint over this, so I'm not too worried. It just looks like it needed it. Something there. Mm. Yeah, that's better. All right, now we can go back to, and put the um, petals back in. And I'm going to add a little bit of. maroon color. Don't need a lot. Maybe a little more yellow. Back over with some of these. Because there's usually a fair number of them on the plant. So I can go back over. And they kind of um, overlap the center seed head a little bit. So you can kind of bring them in a little bit to the Strengthen up some of these. And let's see, some of these need to be redone just to give them a little more color. And then I'm going to just add a little bit. This is very strong, so just here and there, add a little bit of maroon.
do some of these. Okay, I'm gonna have to add a little bit of white to this to go over the green, and then I'll go back over top. A lot of times your yellow, orange, red sometimes are kind of transparent. So sometimes you have to uh, add a little white or cream to your mix. Just keep piling them on. Gives it a really nice look when you mix the different um, colors together so that they're kind of streaky. And sometimes you'll find there's small ones, there's bigger ones. Just play with it. Make them more lumpy. This is your way of playing and seeing how to do things. Don't worry if you go over your um, leaves. That's good. can paint in some of these leaves a little more so you can uh, figure out where you want your center line going um, if you want some shaded areas maybe there's a curl of the leaf put um, the lines in with your colored pencil too. You don't have to um, use your paint for this either. Way will be looking good. Uh, I think I'm going to have a line there. I'm going to darken this area just so that the bear doesn't show through it. And then I can always lighten with colored pencil if I wanted to. up here, darken some areas. Can put some more of these in, a little darker. Now we'll do a little bit of um, center work. 
So I am just going to do um, some stippling. So I'm going to take a deer foot stippler or a blender work too. If you have a blender, um, here's one here. This is a blender and uh, just take some of this brown, a little bit of yellow, and depending on the let's see, just stipple. I think I, I like the uh, I guess I could do it. It should be a little bit darker along the edge of your flower. So I'm just taking the, I think it's Van Dyke Brown. And stippling along the edge. You can go into the petals a little bit too. Same here, along the edge. And this one, I'm just going to go, I don't want to go over some of these petals, so I'm just going to go along the edge there. This one here, I can always actually put the petals back in again too. but. Up to you. Now I can take some of that yellow and this one here is kind of facing you so the highlights would be at the top a little bit. So you just lightly stipple the top a little more than the bottom. Don't go in a row either because and then it kind of looks um, like a pattern. Same with this one. It's going to have a little more. You still want to see the brown through it too. So we'll color it all up. This one. Take a little bit of that cream color. You could add a little bit of yellow to it, I guess. And do the same thing. Don't have too much on your brush though. And this time more or less on the top. Don't do a lot, but just a bit. On the top, very top. So more or less highlight. And then just around the center, you do a little smidge. Because they have a concave on the center, then I want you to take some of that brown again and just do in the center. show. You could even go darker right in the center. Like that. Okay. Now I'm going to take some black. And I'm going to do some bees. So I think I'm going to have one here. I'm just going to do some, and one up here, I think. 
You can do as many as you want. Maybe one here. Hey, Devin. Thanks. So those are going to be my bees. And <laughs> they're just little poofs. Fuzzy bees. So dry the bees and then you can take either... Um, pasta or a really small stippler. Put some um, yellow on them. Let's see. Mm. Take this brush. I might have to use a bit of that buff color. And let's see, I'll just put. stripes on them, I guess. And then I'm going to just add a little bit of yellow and brighten that up a little bit. Once those are dry, we can also just use um, colored pencil, make them a little darker. And then you'll just make wings once they're dry. There's my bees. <laughs> All right. Let's dry these. And let's see what we can do with a little bit. Uh, actually, do I want to? We could leave it as this, or we could. Put a bit of a glazing on here. I think I might just to see if it looks right or not. This is bugging me. So I'm just gonna color in a few of these areas where the bear would be. And darken it. It's more or less a, a glazing than anything else. You don't have to do this if you like it the way it is and leave it. But I'm anal this way. <laughs> you could take a magic marker too and do the same if you you're using scrapbook paper. There's no um, gesso or anything on here so it wouldn't uh, hurt your markers in any way. But don't go over top of uh, acrylic paint with your alcohol markers because it will very quickly ruin them. This is just a sword that I'm using. It's a soft one, so I'm able to uh, just put a wash on fairly easily.
sometimes this yeah, just play with it. See what you feel you should be doing. Maybe you like with the lighter color. Um, everybody's different, so if you see something that I'm doing that mm, you don't care for, change it. That's how you learn. That's how you figure out things. By experimenting, changing things, thinking outside the box, taking chances. It's just paper. You can always drop another one, print off another of these. See, I like that. I prefer that. Not much, but I like it. Now let's uh, use some colored pencils on this and see what we can brighten or... Uh, let's see. What should we do? Let's do the leaves. So I think um, we'll do some veins. Some highlights in the, in the stems and stuff. Sometimes it's just a matter of a little dash and dots here and there. Sometimes it doesn't really take a whole lot. Okay, so this one here looks like a big blob, so I'm going to make it like this part of the leaf is curled up. So you'd hit, you would see the highlight from the sun on the top of the leaf. And... This part down here, depending on how the sun's shining, it might be lighter or it could be darker. If it's shaded at all, it'll be darker. But if the sun's shining on it, the sun would shine through the this part of the leaf and the underside would look lighter. So, depends how much you want to... <laughs> I'm just going to do it like this. Now I could do Let's see the veins would be the vein would be coming down like this. It would be probably darker the vein because it would be more thicker. We'll see. Let's put the vein on this one here to be curling over. And the vein would be lighter because it's um, this one here. That's the top, and then the vein would be coming down here, and hmm, let me think. You don't have to put all the veining in. Sometimes um, it's nice without. It, sometimes it just looks too busy. So 
So that's um, something you have to figure out what you like. Okay, so this one here, the vein comes down here. And Depending on the relief, sometimes they're a little thicker where they meet the vein in the center. So you can thicken that up if you want. Play with it. See what you can do with it. Just have fun. Experiment. I'm going to darken that area once the, these guys are done. A little bit of highlight there for the shadow. Mm, these are those little back pieces of the There's another vein. You could lighten the leaves in a certain way too, um, making them shadows and dark areas on them. This is a little lighter on there. Could make the edges a little bit different. Give them a little bit of a serrated edge. Uh... Oh, thanks, Devin. Let's see. Um, let's. That's a really bright yellow. So let's do. Even paler. Just in the very tops, it might be a little bit lighter. Sometimes you'll see um, like a bright highlight. I find um, if you if you're thinking about highlights and, and um, shadows there is there's usually three. There's a highlight, a medium, and then a shadow. So if you can put those three things in your painting, 
you'll have a really nice looking painting. It doesn't take much, but you, uh, you really need the lightest lights and the darkest darks too. Just a black green. Do I have one here? Okay. That might work. Let's see. It's a bad one. Nope. Let's see. Uh, maybe. want to add really darks you can do that too so wherever there'd be a, a heavy shadow so maybe right in here that leaf along the edge of um Sometimes you'll see that in the edge of the, like alongside the main vein, it, it'll be a little bit shadowed. Again, this is how, what I like to do. You don't have to do this. If you like more simple, that's great. I like details, so I love doing, I could spend hours hours doing this type of thing. So I'm going to put a little bit more of a dark edge in here. It's nothing kind of scribbly. Just along the edge of these flowers. That'll give it uh, even more dimension. Maybe a little bit of a shadow there. Mm, right here. Underneath the stems, maybe. Mm. Parts of that. Those leaf, those brackets or whatever there are in the Alright, and then the flowers can even be. So if I got a nice dark gold, should work. So this one is marigold. So just along the very very edge of this, it'd be darker. Now you can put some lines in there if you want, in between overlaps of the petals. It, you know, it all depends on how much how much detail do you want to put in. I'll just do this one. What time is it? Oh, it's still early. My son's getting ready for work. So you'll see the shadowing of some of these. 
or laps. It's up to you, and you can just leave them. Okay, and then uh, white. Hmm. Then you can do highlight too on bits, the edges, or maybe where the tops of the creases are. It's up to you how much you want to put in. This is the part of, of the uh, painting that I like to do the best, I would say. Sometimes it does, you know, you don't need a whole lot. Sometimes the paint does it all. But it's nice to be able to put it in um, when you want. Sure you do. I know you do. You've got the patience. You know what, it's not, I wouldn't say it's, it's, you have to have believe in yourself. Um, once you do a few of them, you'll learn about um, where things need to go. Uh, when you start to understand um, contrast, shadows, highlights, and where they go, you'll be a lot more confident in doing those things. That's where I find most people have the problem of the confidence to spend the time to do it because they're scared of making a mistake and that's natural. But just do it. Have fun. See what see how it turns out. Okay, let's get these little bugs, these little uh, bees. I think I'm gonna. I have no um, matte medium or anything on this, so I'm gonna just use a pen, and I'm gonna draw suggestions of a wing. So, and they only have little little tiny. Just make them small. That's all I'm going to do. Like, and then maybe I'll put a double one in, or I don't know. Yeah, like that. Okay. And then I'm going to take some watercolor. I need to take 
paint too. Um, I'm just going to take some of this um, watercolor that Zandra gave me. It's um, Sun Gold, I think it's called. And that's um, Paint and Paper Studio, I believe, dot com. And I'm just going to add some sparkle. I might need to, let's see. No, I think I'm going to have to use paint instead. Let's see. I want something sparkly. Actually, I think what I'll do is I'm going to get some of that, um, what's it called? It's kind of like a holographic um, paper, but you can see through it. There's a name, Angelina, or, or I can't think of the name of it, but I've got some. And I'm going to put cut little leaves, little, um, uh, what you call it? little wings out and glue them on. Here's what cracks me about why wouldn't I want to do it exactly as shown. This is exactly how I want my crap to look. <laughs> well you can if you want. I'm just saying you don't have to if you want to experiment. <laughs> so there it is. A little bear in the sunflower field causing mischief. <laughs> so I like get your scrapbook paper, use it, use it to paint on. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you'll give it a chance. Download it. It's uh, I have a link below so you can. Did I link it? Yes, uh, yes, I did link it. So you can uh, download it. It's for everybody. You don't have to be a member for this one. It's um, downloadable for everybody. So I hope you'll uh, print it off and give it a try yourself. You could make it a polar bear, you could change it up for the season, <laughs> you could make them Christmas bear, you could put a Halloween bear, <laughs> whatever you want to do. But I hope you'll give it a try and just experiment. Have some fun with it. Alright, so next week, uh, Tuesday, I have another um, fairy to do. How you make me brave enough to try painting someday, but only on the day I want to feel like a complete... No! I've seen your stuff. You're good. Come on. I know you guys. And you know what they say, what you don't use, you lose. So that basically counts for anything creatively like when I stopped doing acrylics for years I literally had to go back and relearn it so it goes for everything drawing watercolor acrylics you have to keep doing it in order to get better at it so don't expect to um, do a painting right off the bat, never done it before. And the chances of it turning out fantastic is slim. But the more you work at it, the better you get at it. The more techniques you realize how to work your paint brushes, what paint will do, and it, then it becomes second nature. 
So I'll let you guys go, and we'll see you on Tuesday, and I have another uh, fairy that we'll be doing in watercolor. So I hope you s to see you there, and have a fantastic weekend, everybody. Bye for now.